Kingston upon Hull is a port city in East Yorkshire and was one of the worst bombed cities of the UK during the Second World War. An estimated 1,200 people were killed and a further 3,000 injured. Between 90 to 95 percent of the buildings were damaged or destroyed and 86,000 houses were affected. Around 152,000 people were left homeless. To put that in perspective, that was nearly half the population of Hull at the time. The scars of the Hull Blitz still remained for years afterwards as the damage was so extensive to the city and the memories of those nights still stay with those who survived the bombings. I remember the Blitz. I went to the Cottingham School. There was only one school in Cottingham and there was about what, four or five hundred yards from home. So whenever there was an air raid in the war, uh, there was no air raid facilities, no shelter facilities at the school. So I came home. If the buzzers blow straight down the road, well, I had to cross the main uh, crossroads, which was no problem at all because there was no traffic but I tended to stand and look at the aeroplanes up in the sky. I, I, I was, once or twice I was told to move on and because there was, uh, you know, a couple of five planes, obviously a German and, a, and a, an English plane having a go at one another up in the sky and I was fascinated. Even at that age I was fascinated with aeroplanes. The first raid on Hull took place on the 20th of June 1940 at 1.40am. It occurred on Chamberlain Street and it was only a small incendiary attack with no fatalities. But to put that in perspective however, London was not to see its first proper raid until August of the same year. However, over the course of the war, Hull was to see an estimated 82 raids and about 800 alerts, with the people spending around 1,000 hours in the air raid shelters. The last attack took place on the 17th of March 1945, so yep, just a few months before BE Day. It took place on Holderness Road, where a lone Heinkel 111 bomber killed 17 people, with many having just left the cinemas. This was actually one of the last raids on the entire country. This belonged to my uncle mm. and he was head air raid warden for Wormsley Street Spring Bank area where Cliff Pratt's cycle shop used to be on the corner. And this is his book. 1939, September the 4th, the times that the alert went off when the whole clear happened. Every page, all the dates, September, June, November, July, all the way through, when they started, when they finished, all the way through. Started at 11.45, finished at 1.15. And were some of them mornings and nights as well then? One in here, 11 o'clock at night till 3 o'clock in the morning. Why would why were they so long? Because they used to drop, drop bombs as they went up bombing into Sheffield. When they turned round, they followed the Humber out. And any bombs left. And every one of those, the dates, all the way through, right until... Nineteen forty four April September twenty fourth. So September twenty fourth, nineteen forty four, they were still dropping bombs. Four forty till five fifteen. Some of the most notable raids of the war included the infamous night of March the eighteenth, nineteen forty one. A one ton bomb struck the National Picture Theatre on Beverly Road. The screen and auditorium were destroyed, but thankfully people escaped. However, that night, 91 people lost their lives as bombs rained down from the Luftwaffe above, mainly hitting Central Hull. 
Then there was the infamous night of the 18th and 19th of July of the same year, in which a staggering 140 people were killed. The Victoria docks were bombed and there were fires reported at the East Hall Gas Works. We lived in a very small house and a bomb hits a few houses around direct. We were, you know, in those days, parents thought that the big solid oak table you could and we always went under that when the sirens went. And everything was destroyed except that table. We were saved. And so we, we were all shipped off to my um, grandmother, who so had an aunt living there, and another daughter also bombed out with three children. We had fun alive, six in a bed and <laughs> all this. And uh, we, we gradually got back on our feet, but we, we came out of bombing with nothing. As a, as a child, we were never scared. We didn't, I mean, the fact that we were pulled out of bed and a blanket round us and went to next to us, uh, garage that, with other people there, it was all fun to us. And of course my dad was away in the army. Um, we saw my dad once in four years and my mum got pregnant with another <laughs> one of us. And um, yeah, it, as children, you don't realise the seriousness of it. But the worst nights of bombing by far were the 7th, 8th and 9th of May 1941. Over 400 people were killed in this period of the most intense bombing that Hull saw throughout the war. The Luftwaffe dropped bombs on civilian areas such as shopping centres and the high streets, but they also hit industrial and shipping areas such as the Alexandra docks and the Riverside Quay. I mean, I was eight when the war started, and um, as it progressed on, it became a bit of a wonderland because I was, I was mad on aircraft, and uh, I used to buy all the we used to have all the spotting book aircraft spotting books. But um, originally, first of all, when the war started, I was evacuated, and um, I was evacuated to a place called it's called. Whitgift, but it's pronounced Wigif. And it's on the north bank, on the south bank of the River Hose, uh, to the east of the of Go of Go. And um, I was there and I hated the whole time I was there. I, I couldn't get on with the people I was living with. I, I came from a, a very talkative family and these people very rarely talked to each other. It was a bit of a, a dull place. They had a son, and he wasn't very, he didn't talk to me much. And uh, so I was very homesick. And uh, one day I was walking from uh, the school at Reedness. Reedness is about three miles down the river. And I used to have to walk along the river bank to get to school and back again. And I was walking back one afternoon, getting about it was about five, four o'clock, and uh, I heard the drone of an aircraft from my left, and it was flying from the direction of Goul. And as it got nearer, I could see it was a German aircraft, and it was flying about 50 feet above the river, very slowly. And as he as he approached me, I could see it, it was. A, I, I knew what he was. It was a Heinkel 111 bomber, twin-engine bomber. And it had a, a, an upper gun position, machine gun position, in the middle of the fuselage. And s sitting there was an, air, was an airman, obviously. And as they passed, they waved to me. And I waved back. And I could see the swastika and the, the cross on the side of the aircraft. And, that, and as, he, as, he drift, as he went down towards the Humber, he was um, very low over the water, and I think he was in trouble, and I think he was heading for trouble as well. But I, I often wondered afterwards whether I evoked something in him, and he thought of something, of a boy that he might have, and he waved to me, and I waved back. But all he had to do was turn his machine gun, and I was gone. But that's life. We got on with it. Hull was targeted for its importance as a port city and was one of the largest ports in the UK. 
It was a centre of industry, particularly shipbuilding. The National Radiator Company, which lived here, which also miraculously avoided being bombed, also made munitions for the war effort. However, Hull was also targeted for its proximity to Germany by boat, and when the Nazis took control of air bases in Scandinavia, Hull was right on their doorstep. Bombers would often fly over Hull or down the Humber estuary to get to other locations, meaning Hull was in a prime location for an aerial assault. Uh, so we had the Anderson shelter and most nights when Hull was facing the air raids I was carried down because I was what, three, four years old into the Anderson shelter with my mother and father and the lady and gentleman next door, Auntie Rhoda and Uncle Bill, I knew them as um, because they didn't have a shelter and their daughter Vera and I remember Vera because I had a doll called Vera that she had bought me. And we uh, used to go down there each, each night when there was an air raid and probably spend the night there and then next morning come out again. And on one occasion um, we went down and it was a very noisy night. I mean, I suffer from quite bad hearing problems and they blame it on this particular night. And when we came out of the shelter, I uh, looked out of the shelter and across the road I could see the house of a friend. Now that was very strange because when I went in the shelter our house stood between. <laughs> and half of it had gone, half was left and half totally disappeared. So we had furniture hanging off floors and things. And, and we all went next door to, uh, Mr., uh, to Uncle Auntie Rhoda's and Uncle Bill's and she said oh I've got an egg and bacon pie we can have until you find somewhere, because obviously we had to find somewhere to live. And uh, we went into the kitchen and I can just remember this, her coming out and saying, oh, I'm terribly sorry, but the egg and bacon pie bacon pies being blasted. And I said, Auntie Rhoda, I'll have some of your blasted egg and bacon pie. And it's a story which is still told in the family all these years later, of Trev's blasted egg and bacon pie. Owing to its strategic importance, Hull was neglected in the media. This was done deliberately by the government. They didn't want the Germans to know just how hard they were hitting Hull, and they didn't want them to know what areas specifically they were hitting, to try and stop them from hitting with more accuracy. They also wanted to prevent lowering people's morale, and thus they limited the spread of knowledge of how much death and destruction was actually taking place here in Hull. After all, the purpose of the Blitz was not only to try and cripple Britain's war effort, but also cripple Britain's morale. Thus, in the newspapers, Hull was never really referred to by its name and was often called a northeast coastal town. I was born down Scarborough Street. My mum kept in touch with the neighbours. So when it was bombed, her auntie Sissy's husband was away in the army. So my mum took her in and after a few nights we were sat in the shelter and she said I've got stomach ache day. So my mum said oh it's the shock with the nerves, you'll be alright when we go back in and you get in bed. She said no you need to take me in now. So my mum said why? Well, she said just take me in ED away from the bands. Anyhow mum took her in. A minute after she come running back to the shelter to, to my brother who was 17 at the time, old Billy, who's died now, bless him. And uh, she said, I, I need you to come in. And she said, go around, ask your army to the air raid shelter warden and tell him that you need a midwife. So he said, how uh, will he know where there is one? He said, well, if there isn't a policeman or someone will know. So he went running around while the business was going. And uh, after a while, the midwife come back. And uh, so the lady under my mum's table, it was like a wooden table, what you could open like a book. And me opened the table wide and laid her under the table and she got a beautiful baby girl. Obviously when the sirens went during the day, we was kept in school 
but on the night, as I said, we had to go in the shelter. But uh, we didn't have any board games or anything like that because we used to go straight, not realising the seriousness. We used to, when we went in the shelter, we used to go straight back to sleep. So that was obvious. It was a real big shelter because it was built for seven. And I remember during the day we used to open the shed door and me and my sister Day used to climb up on the roof and see who could jump the furthest off onto the lawn. And my mum opened the window one day and said, stop doing that, don't come running to me if you break your legs. We said, mum, how come we come running to you with rotten legs? <laughs> The King and Queen visited Hull in August 1941 after a lot of the intense bombing had passed. However, Hull was to see bombing throughout most of the war. Hull was vital to Britain's war effort, particularly through shipbuilding. A lot of Northern England was quite vital to the war effort and industry, including Sheffield, which had one of the only drop hammers in the country for the first 18 months of the war that could help make the Spitfire engine. However, a lot of the northern cities, including Hull, are often forgotten about when we talk about the Blitz nowadays. In order to remedy this, I think one of our duties, not only as historians, but also as people, is to listen to those who have stories to tell, who have memories of those awful nights, but also those who have stories of bravery and, of course, as survivors, as stories of those who managed to live through to tell the tale. And it is up to us to preserve those stories for generations to come.